So if you are looking to start a home-based food business from home in the state of Tennessee, then this video is the one for you. All right, so let's hop right into it. Welcome to Marketing Food Online. I am Dan, and I'm going to help you get your cottage food business, your domestic kitchen, up and running in the state of Tennessee. Tennessee is a little bit different than other states. Um, when it comes to wanting to create uh, a domestic kitchen, as it's called, it's, a, it's a referred to a little differently, um, it's, it is a little bit much more difficult when it comes to the setup, requiring certain training, some permits. They do have home inspections. There are some certain plans that have to be implemented. Um, and also, uh, when you're operating from a domestic kitchen in the state of Tennessee, you are limited to 100 units per week of, of a particular product. And I'm going to get into later in the video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what that 100 units per week really means and break that down for you. Before we do, let's hop into the selling aspect of it. As far as the allowed venues, where exactly can you, where can you sell products when you make them in your domestic kitchen? Uh, Tennessee does have a great selection, a, great, a big, big list of where you can sell. Um, as far as events like fairs and festivals and public events, farmers markets, um, you can actually sell online, but traditionally what happens is that you got to deliver it in person, which is actually not that bad. Uh, making the transaction online is one thing. You can't necessarily ship it. You'd have to actually bring it to the individual who's purchase, purchasing it. Restaurants can actually sell your products, or restaurants can use uh, one of your products as an ingredient or something within their menu as well. Retail stores, uh, grocery stores, uh, things like coffee shops, cafes, etc., can also sell your products. Um, it's a little bit different. It won't necessarily be allowed as far as food trucks are concerned. You can't sell to a food truck and then have them turn around and resell it to their customers. Roadside stands as well. If you've got like a roadside vegetable stand or produce stand or farmer's market on the side, that's something you can also do as well. Now, the type of uh, allowed services, um, <clears throat> delivery and wholesale and, of course, pickup. So when you do wholesale, you can sell like a case pack, for instance, if you've got a jam or a jelly and you're wanting to sell it by bulk and wholesale, you can definitely do that. But again, remember, it falls under the domestic kitchen laws, which are different than a traditional cottage food law, okay? Now, um, catering businesses are something that's actually going to be regulated by the health department. If you're doing even like wedding cakes or large cakes or things of that sort that are going to be made to order, you really want to be careful because that's going to actually be regulated by the health department. That's not allowed under the domestic kitchen law, okay? Um, so some of the other products that you can do are bagels, uh, scones, you do cakes and some cakes and cookies, but of course, when you're talking about catering, that's like I mentioned earlier, it's a little bit different. Um, you want to kind of stay away from doing that. Um, types of breads are fine, tortillas and biscuits and such. When it comes to candy, you can do chocolate, cotton candies, assorted candies like hard candies and rock candies, brittles and fudge, uh, dry goods, um, mixes and dried fruits, coffee beans and herbs, uh, spices and such are fantastic as well. If you want to start a tea business, you can do that as well. Uh, from home it's and it's great to do these things from a home setting because your initial investment is very minimal up front and it's a great way again to get experience in um, op operating a food business for yourself before you go either online or even get into a retail store to truly find out if what you're making is something you're really passionate about and you enjoy doing and you want to turn that into a full-time business and make a really big business from it operating a home-based food business is really going to minimize your risk and allow you to kind of do it on your own time as well. So I'm always a big encourager uh, of anyone being wanting to become a food entrepreneur. Please do try check it out at home first. Start from home. Always start small. You know, you can think big, but start small and take small steps. But make sure that you, of course, abide by the laws and the regulations and rules. And keep in mind now, now states can set up cottage food laws. And as it trickles down to the cities and local municipalities, cities and um, uh, counties, they have the ability to also add to those laws. Uh, there's also zoning issues to make sure that you're in the right area that you're allowed to do it where you are. Uh, some states don't let you do it like out of an apartment. You want to do something from home, but you can't do it from an apartment setting. You'd have to do it from a, an actual standard home, a single family home setting. So there's a lot of different things that come into play. Uh, but you, I'll give you some, specifically for Tennessee, I'll give you some information down in the description that will allow you to go ahead and click on those links and educate yourself a little bit more as to uh, what is allowed and what's not. All right, so we're going to get into uh, what are some of the prohibited foods, things that you can't necessarily make. You want to stay away from salsas, pickles, or anything like fermented, anything with vinegar or acids. 
The reason being is that a lot of times the pH, if the pH is not correct when you're producing those products, people can get sick. There can be certain bacteria and such that can form in those foods, so you want to stay away from that unless you want to get into a commercial kitchen setting, and that, that's, of course, a totally different type of, of license. So in essence, you really can still stick to those quote-unquote non-potentially hazardous foods to make. You want to stay away from those and focus on the items that you can make. Um, and you can definitely take a look at <clears throat> opening something that's local and delivering it to your customers or getting into even a farmer's market setting every weekend and making an extra few hundred dollars a weekend doing it. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, let me get into what I mentioned earlier about the 100 units per week limitation. So a unit of sale, okay, so means whatever the quantity of that product is sold is, is going to be a single unit. So if you have strawberry jam, you can sell 100 units of that a week. If you have grape jam, you can sell 100 units of that a week. It's of 100 units per week of a particular product. Now, if your product is a 12-pack of jams or jellies, then that single case pack can be sold 100 times. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So you're able to get more product into a case pack than you would individually. So you, you should take advantage of that. If you're able to sell 100 cases of 12, obviously that's going to be quite a bit. Now, the one thing about it is that pets are never allowed in the home at any time. So if you do have pets, you unfortunately may not be able to do this from your home because Tennessee has really restrictive laws in regards to having pets in the home during uh, the production of it. So... As far as the amount of sales limit, that's going to be based upon the actual units. It's not going to be a dollar amount. It's going to be a sales unit amount, okay? The other thing is, is that while you're using the kitchen for your domestic kitchen production, you can't be doing other things. So if you're producing a food product for your domestic kitchen business, you can't be making dinner at the same time, for instance, or lunch for the kids or something like that. It has to be dedicated specifically to um, that production of those products. Now, from the business standpoint, what is expected when you want to open a cottage food business in Tennessee? Now, great question. Now, you're going to need to have, let me get this situated here really quick. Here we go. So before registering, you must take a food safety certification course. Okay, so that's, that's something that's going to cost money. You can complete that online. Normally, it's around $75. Um, if you want to do it in Tennessee, they actually have an agricultural extension at the University of Tennessee. Uh, that occasionally offers like in-person courses as well. You can take that. Uh, domestic kitchen request form. So you need to submit what's known as a domestic kitchen request form, which includes a list of all of your products, production processes, and labels. So keep in mind, too, that you're going to need to label your product. You're also going to need to let them know how are you producing it, what are the steps, and, of course, a list of the products itself, and that is going to be the list that you're going to go off of. So those are going to be the specific items that you can make. And if you're going to add to it, you need to let them know. So a food manufacturer license. So this is also something that you would need uh, to submit for a food manufacturer license, which normally runs around $50 a year. And I'll add some description information down below for the links for that. That's something you get from the state. So you can get that as well. Now, you're going to need to apply for uh, a home inspection. Okay, so that's under the, again, the domestic kitchen law. That's not a cottage food thing. So uh, a local, basically a local authority will inspect the home kitchen. Normally if it's the health department, it could be, or it could be the Department of Agriculture. They'll come in and take a look at the kitchen and then sign off on it. And that's going to be those, those uh, few things that you'll have to have done. Now the other thing you're going to have to keep in mind is uh, if you're on a well, some homes are not on city water or ci city uses water or such, but if you're on a well and you're utilizing well water, it's going to have to be tested to make sure that the water is adequate enough and suitable enough to be used in producing a food product for consumers to eat, okay? Now, you also need to contact the city, which potentially could uh, also have to have a business license. And the reason why I say that is business uh, counties and cities vary, and some of them may not require to have a business license. I would highly recommend you definitely incorporate yourself. Incorporating yourself is different than a business license, but make sure you're incorporated and you have food producers insurance to protect yourself from any liability. <clears throat> now, the only last thing you may, may come, in, come to play with, and I mentioned this earlier, is about the zoning requirements. So the planning and planning the zoning division of your county or city may also require you make sure you have an occupational permit to be doing that within the certain zoning. Okay? So what exactly is going to go on your label, Damien? What is it that I need? Well, you're going to need to have a business address. Where are you making it from, right? You're gonna, that's, in essence, going to be your home address. Your business name the ingredients of the product, your net amount, and your product name. 
make sure that those pro those that little tidbit of information is on every label, and you'll be good to go. Okay. Um, so lastly, I'll wrap it up really quick. I just want to let you know that I highly recommend you try to, to to create your business from home at first. Don't invest too too much of it because you want to make sure it's something viable, something that you're either passionate about or something you can make money at. And from there, it's going to allow you the opportunity and the chance to then you can grow your business and move into a commercial facility later on down the road. So if you have any questions about the state of Tennessee in the cottage food or domestic kitchen law, please do let me know down below, and I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. And I appreciate you guys listening, and we'll see you on the next video.